All right, welcome everybody. Welcome back to episode nine of the Yankee Football Podcast, uh, Expert Opinions by uh, American Amateurs. Uh, we back at it. We all three in the studio, finally, at a long last. COVID be damned. Christmas be damned. COVID be damned. Christian holidays be damned. Mm-hmm. Um, social gatherings. Social gatherings. Omicron. Friendship. Omicron. Friendship be damned, too. Happiness. Yeah. I don't like any of y'all. Mm. But we're here, and we're here to talk about some uh, important topics today. Um, some... Some uh, yeah, very interesting topics that are sure to uh, fans or spark your attention, your interest. <laughs> starting with um, the Afcon tournament, so we're gonna get right down to it. Afcon round one is concluded. Um, hopefully, you guys have been watching the tournament. If you have, make sure you comment your thoughts down below. If you're watching on YouTube, and also subscribe and follow us on Twitter at the Yankee Football Pod. Anyways, get back to Afcon round one. I'm not sure how many games you guys have seen. I've tried to watch as much as I can. And I feel like we all probably have some general thoughts about the tournament so far. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. If it could be summed up. Been a fucking snooze fest <laughs> this whole time. Yeah, if it's going to be summed up nicely in two words, those two words are it's okay. I like Jake's better. It's a fucking snooze Offensively, fest. snooze fest. You could also say very trash. And and I think all of those would apply to AFCON. I mean, I'm, a, I'm honestly shook. At the quality of finishing in this goddamn tournament. I mean, it is shocking. We were talking about in the in the K-League episode, which, by the way, if you haven't seen that, make sure you go check it out, that the finishing in the K-League left something to be desired. But it was still exciting. But still exciting. Yeah. AFCON, mm-hmm. so far, lacks the excitement and still has trash finishing. So the end result is I feel like I'm watching, like, preliminary CONCACAF World Cup qualifiers. I mean, it, it's like Cuba versus Belize. <laughs> I mean, it's honestly been that bad so far. You said you said it perfectly, or you summed it up perfectly a couple days ago. You said, I wish that they had a full week to train together before they played these games so we could get some semblance of organization or cohesion. Yeah. And I, I think in that, in that respect, AFCON really gets the shit under the stick. Yeah. Because, I mean, just, just think about it. When, uh, when the Copa America was happening... You know, or, or, or right after that, like uh, uh, Cristian Romero, Los Celso, people were getting in trouble for wanting to go back to their teams to train, leaving early, breaking pro- COVID protocols to go make an effort for their international team. But, I mean, mm-hmm. the the African players are kind of getting the shit under the stick because it's right when the Premier League is kicking back up again. They have to leave. Liverpool does not want to let their African players go, like – it's just kind of a, a drama, and I think that yeah. I think the tournament suffers for that. I think the quality definitely takes a hit. Um, it just I'm, looks like they're sprinting up the uh, wings and crossing things into the box nine times out of ten. Wait a minute, it doesn't you, work. You've seen a cross? <laughs> I don't think I've seen a cross yet. <laughs> I mean, it is astonishing. Jake, did you watch Ivory Coast today? Mm-mm. No, I didn't get a chance. Good, you didn't miss anything. Because you know how you said that Zaha had to go beast mode if they were going to do something? Well, it looks yeah. like Ivory Coast is bouncing out early. Because he was not good. The entire Ivory Coast team. You would think that these guys don't know anyone's name. They've never seen their teammates before. The cohesion or lack of is astonishing in these teams. The Mexican mm-hmm. B team has more cohesion and tactical knowledge and know-how than these African teams, and I don't understand because they got the talent. They do have the talent. They do have the talent. I'm convinced it's that crazy. it is the fact that they get there so late, and mm-hmm. uh, I don't. I I really don't know enough about the actual uh, international organizations to speak to that. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if Argentina has uh, a shit game, I'm like, oh well, it's because their training schedule, and well, this is going on in the country. I know right. this about the president. You're saying you just don't follow the African. I don't, I don't follow okay. the in depth nuances okay. of their. Uh, uh, their organizations enough to know if that's what's at fault but what it looks like from an outsider's perspective it really rang true when you said it it just looks like these guys showed up had a couple days to prepare and then they threw them in i am more than certain that the quality of the football that is going on is going to elevate Mm -hmm. exponentially the further that this tournament goes on because these guys are out here they're playing their hearts out and they are a tremendous a uh, group of players with tremendous physical capabilities. Like the athleticism in this tournament so far has been 
phenomenal. Yeah. Like they're they're excellent. It's it's the awesome. acrobatics like, is very the acrobatics when you yes. That is there. Yeah. So the cohesion, once they get that in, once the playmaking starts, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited going forward. And uh, maybe it's not as interesting for us as outsiders, but, you know, a 1-0 to zero Copa America final for me is a huge deal. You know, it doesn't have to be 2-3, to three, but right. that's because I'm invested in it, you know. Right. You're He's, not a neutral in that sense. No, 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 not at all. So I'm sure that this is a, you know, freaking huge deal. These are probably, you know, the worst kind of football games, like the ones that you dread. You're like, yeah. please, please, I need I need something to happen. here. You're just riveted to your seat. It's not a back and forth where they seem evenly matched. It's like, oh, God, who's going to get lucky first? Yeah. That's the scariest part. That's yeah. the scariest football match to watch. I mean... I feel and I echo the sentiments on, you know, it's like it's like preparing for anything, preparing for a test. Yeah. You know, you don't go in there without any preparation because you're going to get an F or a D, you know, you need some prep beforehand in order to, you know, put your best effort out there. Um, and I think on uh, I, I mean, shit, I don't know about y'all, but I think the only thing that I've fairly enjoyed is uh the shit that happened in the molly game today i saw the ref called the game twice yeah. incorrectly or something i don't know if y'all saw that yeah he uh never seen that <laughs> like did he get paid off or was he just like what what happened and then was that on, was that on purpose was it the nigeria game where they picked the ball up twice they had the ball inspected like twice in the opening 15 minutes what is that they retail that it's ball like, like i don't 200 understand euros. And, and you can't it's just yeah there's there's been a surprising amount of like wtf moments in afcon so far i mean and i i wrote some of them down you know the first one i wrote down is what you just said jake the tunisia game getting called in the 86th minute then the ref's like my bad Mm -hmm. we'll we'll play we'll play till the 90 then he calls it early again then they're like an hour later okay let's go out and play the the last two minutes of the game and the Tunisia team's like, F that, bro. We're not going out again. Like, we just took an ice bath. Um, mm-hmm. We have the Ivory Coast keeper, who's now going to be banned, probably, for most, if not all, of the tournament for doping. So that's excellent. Outstanding. We have the controversial 94th-minute penalty in the Senegal game. You know, Senegal is a favorite for a lot of people. And I will say they probably have the most dangerous team going forward. But whenever you see a perennial, you know, like, or like a continental favorite struggling against a smaller team, and then they get that break, that penalty break at the end. People are always, you know, it's always an eyebrow raiser. Yeah. We got Egypt mm-hmm. coming out with the five five zero formation, never before seen. <laughs> Two blocks of five. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what that is. Algeria and blaming. The result? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like I wonder why they didn't. They didn't score. Maybe it was the five five zero formation that they came out with. Niger- or Algeria blaming the weather for why they lost. They said it was too hot. Meanwhile, for reference, it was eighty six degrees. We that's, play. That's we play in hotter weather than yeah. that. But the Algerian team. That's why they lost. Or sorry, that's that's why they drew. Have to they Sierra qualified Leon. for uh, Qatar? Um, I don't know where they're standing in the calf. Well, they're going to be in for a rude awakening. I just thought, like, what? like Qatar. I, I don't know. There's just something yeah, about, like, a North see. African team saying it was too hot. It, like, Sierra, <laughs> Le- like Sierra Leone wasn't playing in the same goddamn sun. <laughs> you know, like, they had, I don't know, sunscreen and shades on. I mean, it is honestly crazy. And we've seen a lot of snooze fests, like you guys have, have said. I mean, we watched... As much of the Nigeria Egypt game as we could, Jake. We watched I as much of the Nigeria game that we needed to watch. Yeah. The first half mm-hmm. is really what we watched, and then we weren't able to watch the second half. Jake, I don't know. Have you been able to see any games start to finish? No, I haven't been able. I've I've mainly only been seeing highlights since the game times here in the U.S. are kind of wonk. Well, and the broadcasting, They're like tough. they don't. They don't. Wh- who broadcasts that? It's being sports has exclusive rights to. But if you don't have like Directv, the you know even the fancy sports packages don't really have being sports. You have to get like Latino packages. Yeah. Uh, for that, so, and yeah. even then, it's just wild. It's hard to watch. It is. It is tough to watch, and I, and that's probably why it's not that popular of a tournament out, outside of Africa. Is you know not because people think that the football is trash, but I mean. People don't want to spend an extra 60 bucks just to watch some games as a neutral. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and we covered that in, a, in our last Yeah, video. Yeah, we talked about it like extensively. Um, I mean, it's hard to say, and obviously we're probably jumping the gun on a lot of this stuff, but I guess would you has have your expectations changed for the tournament going forward? Like maybe has your has who you think the favorite is changed? Do you think that I don't know your level of hype has decreased? What do you guys think? I I'm I'm excited for this tournament going forward, but I have I'm completely off base. From what I've seen, none of the teams are prepared. From the best to the worst, it all looks evenly matched. It's all <laughs> luck based competition at this Bro, at this really moment. Is. It is. So mm -hmm. I have no expectations. And in a way, that's freeing. That's yeah. really freeing. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have any expectations from any of the teams that I had really, you know, been excited to watch. I'm just excited to see new players and a different uh, a different culture of, of football. So if you want right. my wholesome ass silver lining, I'm just excited for some brand new football in the next coming weeks. So that's where I'm at. I'm content. I don't have a dog in this fight, so I'm not sweating. I'm not pulling my hair out as mm -hmm. I was in Copa America. I'm just, I'm just here for the ride along. I'm excited. Right. I think it can only go up from what we've seen this Ooh, week. What about you, Jake? Anything changed with you so far? Um, I'm a little disappointed watching the highlights and watching uh, or seeing the fixture results uh, i mean yeah i feel most group stages go one or two ways they're really even matched and you're really struggling and you're really trying to be the top of your group or it's so completely lopsided that like it's just guns blazing and yeah. afcon to me i think we had talked about in our last video is just i i was expecting personally more high attacking you know just all offense no defense type of football mm -hmm, yeah. you know where hopefully we were going to see some four three score lines or you know five nil type shit yeah. and seeing snoozers at Bro. one nil or <laughs> nil nil in the afcon Bro. that should be negative points it honestly <laughs> should you should lose a point like come on it no i completely like, agree that like it, it it should not be allowed guys we're talking about like ivory coast whose front three is Wilfred Zaha, Sebastian Haller, you know, the guy who set the Champions League record for most goals in his first eight games, and Nicolas Pepe on the right wing. Yep. These guys can't do anything. I mean, it is shocking. By the way, Pepe should be benched for the rest of the tournament. <laughs> he had two wide open opportunities. Man, skies it. Scott, 30 feet in the air. He has time to take six touches and then get a good shot off. Decides to take it first time, trying to be cute. Skies it. I would, I would bench his ass for the next game. Honestly, I mean, it was embarrassing. And we're talking about, like, that front three is a solid front three. Yeah. Wilfred Zaha is mm -hmm. one of the most dangerous left wings in the Prem. Sebastian Haller's tearing it up in the Champions League. This is no joke. He's, he's given Dortmund four goals in one game. Like, he, yep. these guys are good, but, man, something... Something is not right. So and, in in, and, in that's and maybe it is prep. You think it's the prep? It must be prep. I, I mean, maybe. Can somebody yeah. tell me what these managers are saying? Uh, what are they saying before the game? Please tell me. Say, All right, boys. Just like we practiced uh, <laughs> last summer. Like, <laughs> yeah, remember last year? It, yeah. It's astonishing. So, that some guys getting paid to manage these teams. What What do you think is the uh, is the issue with? Um, with the front three of uh, Zaha and Pepe and um, Holler and Holler, with that much attacking talent, you would think that they would at least give us some electrifying moments for that specific team. So we've talked about the prep. We've talked about at least that's for me. That feels like kind of a mood point. Like ah, yeah, it sucks. But what do you think is the issue between that three? Do you think it's their chemistry that's lacking, or do they not have a midfield to filter up through them? Like, why can't they strike against an equally unprepared defensive team? You know, I would say that I think an easy person to blame or thing to blame is the lack of a midfield, perhaps. Okay. But Nigeria has a good midfield. Senegal has a good midfield. They can't do shit. I yeah. mean, nobody is doing... Algeria won this tournament last time. They can't even score against Sierra Leone. Yeah. With Riyad Mahrez, top 10 player in the world right now. Mm -hmm. Sadio Mane. I mean, it's... Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously for Senegal, but... I mean, it's it's it, almost inexcusable. It has to be cohesion, right? Yes. It has to be a lack of maybe trust between the players. I mean, 
this might be controversial to say, but some African teams are known for like very intense infighting on the team. Like Cameroon especially, they're known for not really liking each other. Wow. Might have to do something with the civil war that's going on there. I don't know. I'm not going to speculate. But I think it's maybe that like intra-squad rivalry maybe that perhaps is is preventing them from playing well that that makes a lot of sense to me because like if you watch like the argentina teams over the years all the guys all the teams that just haven't worked well it's been when like oh you know messi and tevez are having issues and whether they're having issues or not maybe they just don't have the on-field chemistry but when it's too many egos too many different playing styles or lifestyles Mm -hmm. or our cultures collide on a team um, they don't find cohesion, but lo and behold, Argentina wins the one year that guys are breaking COVID regulations to get back with the squad to play for some, you know, previously unknown manager because they want to fight for the badge. Yeah. You know, maybe it really is just a lack of chemistry there, which I think we're still in good hands if that's the issue because the chemistry is just going to build. Yeah. Or it's going to create some interesting Yeah, it's like what you said. I mean, come info. knockout round, these guys will have three, four games under their belt. Hopefully, yeah. Ideally, ideally. So if maybe not, we'll chemistry. have another episode in the future and be like, oh okay, all guys, hope, we were completely wrong. All hope is lost. This I mean, tournament shit. Yeah, like, like, being <laughs> sports, we asked for a refund. Yeah, like I just canceled Sling TV membership. Can't do this anymore. Like, <laughs> and I really hope that doesn't happen because there are yeah. so many good players in this tournament. Yeah, it's interesting. We were all equally excited for this yes. for the Afcon, and this could be yeah. that we're just not as experienced. Again, I'm I, this. That's my easy cop out here is that I'm not as familiar with this tournament but i will say i'm excited and just from an outside perspective it's been a little bit of a disappointment but um i mean going forward i've got i've got really high hopes so shout out to our uh shout out to our extensive viewer base in uh africa across the pond yeah um, don't want to please them. if you're an african fan please comment down below as to why we are yeah. either completely right or completely wrong yeah. either way it pleases the algorithm yeah yeah, we do have one subscriber from last video from Cameroon. So shout out to you, sir. Um, we need help. We, yes, we do need help. <laughs> and, you know, we'd, we'd love to have more, uh, you know, African representation in the comments and educate us on what we flat out do not fully understand. You know, this is our no first AFCON. Advantage. So we have nothing to compare this to from previous years, really. Um It'll be interesting next AFCON because we will we'll have this one under our belt. I really yes. wonder what that episode is going to be like. Like mm-hmm. AFCON 2023, we're going to be like, shit here we go again or we're gonna be like <laughs> super hyped for it i mean we'll we'll see subscribe to find out um i don't know is there anything else you guys want to say about about afcon so far before we move on i don't think so i mean i think to sum it up for me it's been a little disappointing and i think that's a good transition into uh the most diluted national team fan bases right Ooh. I'm going to guess, based on that transition, that an African team is in your top five. It is not, but I oh, wanted to highlight shit. on the word disappointment because <laughs> some of my countries that I named off are in for a lot more disappointment and they better get off their fucking high horses and acting like their golden generations are going to win them something. I'm not looking at you, Connor. Damn. Yeah, I was about to say. I was like, that feels a little pointed, Jake. I feel a little victimized. No, yeah. Argentina won't win anything. So. Anything at all. I uh, Nothing at all. They won't win <laughs> anything at all. Not at all. No. Look, just enjoy no, your Copa. Not, not and I am enjoying my Copa. God damn it. Yeah, I don't I know. I'm very excited Copa. about it. How many did you guys write down? I wrote down five. I wrote down five, okay. but... Two of them were Dallas Cowboys and Texas A&M Aggies, <laughs> and I immediately scribbled those out. Well, those are objectively true. Um, That's a niche joke. See, objectively. we're not pandering to our African audience. Shit, either. I bet everyone in the world will There's agree. no pandering on Yankee football. <laughs> yeah. Even people in Senegal are probably like, yep. Yeah, All right, so what is— Dallas Cowboys. What, okay, so what, yeah. what do we think when we—like, uh, how, do, how do we define this? What is, what is delusion to us? Is it— is it like truly the most deluded fans, or are we thinking like just the fans that piss us off the most? Like Either you or. disagree with. When I thought deluded, or, I, like. I thought more like they gas their team up to no end, and they're incredibly annoying in the way in which they do yeah. that. Okay, that's kind of what I thought. Like you could the kind definition of definition of deluded is believing something that is yeah, not true. You can maybe Ooh. rename this to like top five fan bases that overrate. 
the fuck out of their national team. Argentina makes my top five. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I think so. But I think y'all can Hell back yeah. it up. We can back it up. Do we? Uh, the first they're, Copa they're, America they're in 26 five years. Five, right? Yeah, if they're in the top five, for me, they're bottom. I, I thought about it, but now I was yeah. like, y'all just have, y'all win too many games. In my opinion. I, I guess, but we don't win silverware. So when you hear, especially like, and I thought, look, I had Portugal in mind too, because it's just really easy to come up with the argument. Like casual fans will tell you, oh, well, you have Messi or, oh, we have Ronaldo, you know, like they're going to carry us. That's not the sport. Like if Mo Salah playing for Egypt is any example or Messi for the last however many years. I mean, for Christ's sake, Portugal, Ronaldo did contribute a lot, but when they won their Euro Cup, Ronaldo wasn't even playing in the final. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, he got them there, though. He, yes, like I said, he 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 contributed for sure. But I I don't know. I think that that superstar factor can delude you mm. a lot. Oh, definitely. My number one most deluded team, I think, is going to be England, for me. Hmm. That's not my number one as well. You think? So? Yeah. Yeah. Really? I mean, think about it. They they are bonkers, bro. Yes. And I look. I love Dude, the English. I, I love some of the players, but. Okay. We love the English Premier League. I mean, it's our favorite league to watch. But people act like the English starting eleven is God's gift to Earth. I mean, it's the greatest players that have ever laced up the boots in in the history of the sport. And it's like, y'all need to relax, bro. Y'all came out with the squad for the Euros with like four right backs. Y- y'all just y'all are good, but y'all not that good. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. England is a top ten team, and I, I think almost everybody would agree with that. But you ask England fans, man. They're like, we should win the Euro every time. We should always be in the World Cup final. We have the best players in the world. It's coming home. It's coming home. Like, everyone <laughs> else. Like, oh, like oh, Italy's shit. Like, we're going to beat the fuck out of them. And it's like, what are you saying, guys? Like, it's just... I, and I think because they speak English, too, it's yeah. like, you know, we hear it a lot. But for me, man, like, English fan, especially on Twitter. Oh, my Lord. English fan Oh, my Twitter. Lord. Yeah. They'll no, get okay, soundly look, beaten. Anybody and, sounds toxic on Twitter. We sound yeah, toxic on Twitter. That's true. Not Yank Football Pod. Not There's Yank definitely Football levels Pod. of toxicity, though, when English fans are at the very, very top. Yeah. Um, I don't even think the Premier League has the most toxic fans as a club mm-hmm. or as an organization, but I do think England fans are hella toxic. And it's brutal. Hmm. First to admit, it's because I don't speak, you know, Mandarin or Arabic. I can't read those comments. Oh. I don't know what they're saying, so I can only judge what I can yeah. read. Um, so we'll put that little like uh, asterisk next to England. Well, who's your number one, Jake? Speaking of Mandarin, no, <laughs> the Chinese national team. The Chinese national team, and the only reason why is how do you be one of the most populous countries in the fucking world? put so much money into the Chinese Super League and only qualify for the World Cup once. They care about every other sport. They care about mm. all the fucking Olympic sports like no other. And you always see all these trolls on Twitter, or I guess they're not trolls, they're normal people. China number one. I mean, it's a meme and a stereotype for a reason because those motherfuckers believe it. And you can't even qualify for the World Cup. <laughs> okay, so like, so Chinese fans are really out there talking shit. Well, I don't know because, like you, I I can't speak Mandarin, I can't read Mandarin, uh, I don't even know. I, like that doesn't even come up on any Twitter feed that I've ever scrolled on. Did you see a meme is, is of Mandarin like stuff. a Chinese soccer player like decapitating a Japanese soccer player or something? Like what? what like what type of like delusion are we talking about here? I was more talking about from, like I was saying. Chinese citizens seem to really mm. care that they are really good at anything that they can put their mind to okay. and that they win a lot of medals. You know, they're both academic, they're really strong academically. They're, they can be really strong in sports they smart, as yeah. the, the Olympic stuff. The nationalism. If, if, if they're really like that, qualify for the world cup more than once yeah no they are definitely one of the most uh nationalist uh countries uh without in, in doubt in the world 
you know, um, through their own their own creation. But I guess you're right. Yeah, they really just do not back it up. They, I thought about that. Yeah, and I'm not even talking about like politically, but like I can't even name like I don't even think there's been a Chinese player to play in Europe. Not for a big, not for a top five. Team. I have no idea if there is. But the reason I didn't put China is because they're so bad. Like I thought about it, but I was like, they're so terrible as a team and have never done anything. And I don't really see too many like Chinese, at least Chinese American fans like saying anything about the national team. Like they really don't care about the Chinese soccer team. So I was just like, eh, okay, I'm not going to put them on the list. Maybe their federation doesn't really play nice with others, so their talent can't really expand abroad. Maybe that's why we just are not as familiar. But yeah, I mean, it stands to reason they've got a lot of money. They've got a lot of people. There should be way more talent. It's, I mean, it's kind of the same that's, with the United that's an States. Inter- interesting pick. That's for a very interesting. A while pick. ago, you know. That's why it's a hot take, baby. And we're probably gonna get a shadow ban from some Chinese. Oh, we definitely shadow ban. On I emailed them. I requested them to shadow ban us. I just made a bunch of Winnie the Pooh comments, so we're our Chinese viewership oh, no. is just out the window. I got a long shot for this. Egypt. Egyptian fans think they have legitimately one of the best teams in the world. Why? Because I think Mo Salah is the greatest player of all time. It is madness. I used to have some Egyptian friends on my internship. The way that they would talk about Egypt, you literally would think they were on Germany's level. It was crazy. It was during the World Cup in Russia, you know, where Egypt didn't advance from the group. They thought not only was Egypt going to advance, they were going to win the group, win all three games, stomp their way through, and like they were, they were thinking like semifinal finish. Why? Because Mo Salah. And I'm looking at him like, dude, I get it that this guy's a national hero, but y'all are trash. Like, you really are not a good team. I'm sorry. You're not a good team. This is not the best Egyptian team of all, of all time, even. And so, and I feel like also because not a lot of Arab countries are good, that all the Arab, it's like when Asians like back up other Asians sometimes, you know, it's like, I feel like Arabs do the same thing where it's like one Arab dude or one Arab team has like promise or they start showing signs of potential and everyone's like, yeah, this guy's the best guy ever. And it's like, okay, like I get it. Y'all are riding for your boys, but you got to chill. Okay. Because y'all like not even better than the United States. So just like calm down and they're going to be like, well, you guys didn't make the world cup. Okay. We'll see y'all in, we'll see y'all in Qatar. All right. That's what I have to say to that. But that's my sleeper <laughs> for most deluded fan base in the world. Egypt, bro. Y'all not even winning AFCON. Y'all not even winning AFCON. You're talking about semifinal World Cup. I don't know about I've that. had enough. Hey, not if it's the 5-5. Five five. Not, yeah, not with that 5-5. Five five. Why don't you bring that out against Mexico? See, oh, see where it gets you. Uh, gets you a 1-1 one, one draw against Mexico. That's what it gets you. That's true. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to say we have the most international trophies of any country. So, yeah. Thank you. Oh, God. And you can thank the U.S. For <laughs> you that. can <laughs> thank the U.S. So for that. And we do. They're the little plastic trophies that you get out of the vending machines. Yeah, invite us to AFCON. See what happens. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, I'm Senegal plays like that. About. Ooh. Mm. Mexico bringing it home. Uh, mm-hmm. Which, by the way, Mexico is in my most toxic fan bases of all time as well. They're in my top five. I mean, God damn it. They're so annoying and ridiculous. It's, it's pretty toxic. It's beyond toxic. I'm, I've already had, we had like six videos about this, so I'm not gonna go into it. But give me a number. Where you put them? Uh, they were actually my my two. They were your two. Like they are just below England, in my opinion. Wow. Mexico fans, like, like just one example I haven't really used before. Um, if you want to see other rants about Mexico, like we have a Mexico playlist on the channel. Go check those out. If a if a Mexican American picks a, the United States, I'm gonna say America picks the United States. Mexican fans are like dumbfounded. They're like, why would anyone ever with half a brain not play for Mexico? I don't get it. We're the greatest team of all time. We're, we're the kings of CONCACAF. What? Why wouldn't, what's going on? And they just start foaming at the mouth and it's like, well, because y'all just really, one, ain't that good. Uh, two, the United States is getting a lot better. Y'all are getting a lot worse. Three, I mean, even Canada's challenging y'all now. And four, when it comes to resources, probably quality of life, safety, all these things, the U.S. is just better. But if you ask a Mexico fan, they're like, it's uh, 
freaking paradise or something. It's the greatest team that you could ever be a part of, you know, to put on the, you know, the three colors. Yeah. I, I do think they have gotten better in recent years. I thought about Mexico uh, being my, being my two, but I think I'll move them down. I mean, um, I, I so think, they're in I your top five. They're definitely in my top five, um, just from my experiences as a child. But it's changed in recent years, mostly because were you bullied of, by Mexico fans on the playground? Yeah, I think we all were. Well, yeah. I think we all, I think we all were. Yeah, um, but they're ruthless out there. Anyway. They're ruthless and they're funny. They're good at it too. Yeah. It's what pisses me off. I my Spanish comprehension can't. I can't <laughs> keep up with them. <laughs> they're too. Are they in your five, Jake? Definitely. Okay. Okay. So we're all in agreement. As a kid who grew up in Texas, and yeah. as a we also have that avid fan, we have of, been personally uh, victimized the US, yeah. Yeah. by the Mexican Football Federation and their fans. Yeah. I, I I don't want to put them in number two because of the experience that I had when I went to San Antonio with you boys, with the lads, and we went to see Argentina Mexico, and Lautaro gave uh, y'all a spanking. Since you're crying home to mama. It was a friendly. We weren't trying. It was continue. outstanding performance by Argentina. <laughs> DePaul, Lautaro ran all over San Antonio. A small nation with some The kings a friendly of San Antonio, you could say. Um, you can have but, San Antonio. Uh, the, uh, oh, we took it. Yeah, take it. We knew we could have it, so we took it. All right. So the uh, while we were strolling down the uh, Lautaro Martinez uh, River Walk in San Antonio, uh, um, it came to me, it occurred to me that uh, the Mexican fans that were surrounding me, the sea of green and black, uh, not a single person harassed me for wearing a Argentina jersey. In fact, the, uh, the young lady and her uh, grandfather or father who was sitting to my right, um, they were actually really cordial. And then a Mexican fan, uh, the row in front of us, bought me a beer. Do you remember that? The guy like turned around was like chatting me up, but he I was don't like, remember that. "Yeah, bro, you, I was you know, you guys sunk." I think it was around he the third. Probably goal. felt bad for. I think you I blacked out. Not winning anything from anger. Yeah, probably. No, after the third goal, he turned around. He was like, "I'm buying you a beer. I'm buying you a beer, dude. You guys are spanking us." And I was like, "Wow, for real?" And I, was, I was trying to be like kind to them back. I was like, "No, well, you know, you guys, well, Ochoa's playing a good game. He can only play as, as well as the defense and stuff." And they were like, "Nah, nah, nah. We ass." Yeah, you were lying. We, I was trying. I was, was tr- well. I was trying to be polite, but no, they were like next to me. They were like gassing up Argentina, and I was like, and they looked like they looked hurt beyond belief. Like there was obviously still passion there, but honestly, it was the most uh, it was the most concession I've ever heard from Mexico fans. So for that reason, they're not you know super up there anymore. Well, for me, they're four. For me, it's delusion. It's four. not mean or violent. Yeah. It's delusion. No, it's, but delusion can be the, mean and rude. I too. mean, I guess, but typically not in person. It's gonna be something like, I mean, they might say something like, "Oh, we're gonna beat Argentina's ass," but they're not gonna like strike you. You know yeah. what I mean? But they will say that Mexico, like when the FIFA rankings come out and they have Mexico at eighth, most Mexican fans are like, "Yeah, seems about right." And I'm like, "What are y'all smoking? Are you serious?" That's what I mean when I say when I'm when I put them at two. Like, okay, I think. Uh, like, I think England fans are definitely more violent and, like, kind of got that hooliganism type thing. Yeah. No, and, of course, we're not saying that, like, the majority of these fan bases are violent or If bad you're people. English, you're a violent, drunken uh, aggressor, and I would not invite you into my home. Sorry, Uncle Garvey. Wow. There we have it. But, <laughs> yeah, I think, and it goes back to what you said about, like, defining deluded. I would say it's like the, they overrate their team to no end. Yeah, and so that's why I put Egypt in there. I mean, nicest guys ever. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, I love those guys at my job, but they thought that Egypt was a top five national team in the world, and I just I wasn't having any of that. After that uh, brazen comment I had about the English, you want to know who my number two is for most deluded fan bases? Your own, the United States of America. Shout out Alexi Lawless for calling really? that the fucking United States would beat Argentina when we fucking played here in Houston, Texas, three to one. Oh my god! Okay, I, when this I man tell you, you, you obviously when I tell no, you, no, I was you obviously nauseous. Took that no, this man is I, scarred. This is uh, yeah. Well, yeah. don't ask he me for the this list. Up then. Every I bring it up every Thanksgiving. <laughs> I bring it up every day Can't if I could. Cut this the turkey. Is, listen to me. This is my favorite topic. Alexi Lawless, as a fellow ginger, you have brought shame. You have brought shame to us. Cut your hair. Keep it cut. Bald. 
I, I want it bald. You don't, you don't have the right, you don't have the football knowledge. It infuriates me. The Argentine guy at the end of the table, after the three Americans gave their prediction for, I think it was uh, Alexi Lalas predicted like a three to one win. And then the lady next to him predict, predicted like a two, two draw. And then there was another guy who predicted a one, one draw. Or I think it was two wins and a draw. The Argentine guy at the end of the table was looking at them like this, like the camera panned over and he was like, Okay, yeah, Argentina went at three to one. <laughs> like that is, it is. I think it's literally that the United States has not been in the footballing world long enough to have a proper, like, comprehension of the knowledge that it takes. Because they hear like, oh, well, you know that Kevin uh, Pulsich, Kevin Pulsich, yeah, he's he's pretty good. Landon Donovan's really good. Uh, yeah, you think we're gonna win the World Cup in the next few years? They just they we we do not know. We do not know. A lot of our fans do not have the comprehension, which, look, I'm all here for. I'm happy to educate and talk to people about this and, like, get them involved. But if you think the MLS is the be-all, end-all, or Christian Pulisic is the greatest player in the world, that's delusion to me. And I will not abide it. I'm going to have to res respectfully disagree with you on this. I'm going to disagree as well. That's okay. That's all right. It's my list. I think... They, the U.S. fans are not delusional. I just think an average U.S. fan, if we talk about truly average, I think you're right that they don't know anything about soccer, but they don't give a fuck about it either. Bingo. Because they like other sports. Bingo. They like football, or they like American football. They like basketball. They unfortunately might like baseball. Um, but that, you know, it, they're still deluded like, because of that, you know? I think that's American media. Just Alexi ignorant. Lala specifically. This is your fault. I don't agree with that at all. I, in fact, I think that you just hate that man. I do one hundred. This is. Oh yeah, no. I think most Americans think that we fucking suck. You ask Americans, they're like, it's a running joke that we're trash and that we flop all the time. Right, but every and that we couple can't years, win away from the United States. Every couple of years, they come up like I, I've got friends that'll come up to me and be like, yeah, you know, again, the Kevin Pulsich. Kyle Pulsich, they're like, yeah, he's incredible. He plays for uh, Kelsey, Ke Kelsey, Chelsea, Chelsea. I guess, but I still think that's delusion. In my opinion, I hear that and I'm like, oh, okay. but any this American is soccer fan through to us. does not think that we're good. If you really follow sports, if you're a fan of the Premier League and you're English, right. uh, sorry, American, you think that we're bang average. Yeah, if you truly follow us, but I'm I'm talking about the fans like in general, like why I think that a lot of our fans ride the hype trains. They hear like, "Oh my gosh, well we won this tournament. Okay, so we're we're good now." Okay, we're good. This is time for, you know, the United States to rise. The the bandwagon fans that jump on, which I think is the majority of US soccer fans, if I'm being completely honest. I don't know if that's uniquely oh, it's American. hundred percent bad. No, but I, that's just what I'm experiencing. That's the that is what is filtered through me as an American. That's what I see day to day. You know, I hear that, and or I'll I'll listen to things, even aside from Alexi Lawless, I'll hear things and I'll see things, and I'm like, this is not. Instead of the United okay. States, you should really just have Alexi Lawless on your list. I feel like that is really. Oh, I got him on some lists of of what you're trying to say here. I got him on some lists. Well, that's a goal for us. We're going to get so big that we're going to have an interview with Alexi Lalas and you can just duke it out with him. I want him in the next celebrity boxing match. I want him in the I, undercard I, 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 on the next Logan Paul fight. I'm that's what I want. I want to be there. Okay. Who's isn't another he, guy you got, Jake? Isn't he like 6'4"? Sorry, another country. Well, he played center back, I think, so he's probably pretty My big. second is Belgium. Really? Explain yourself. Yeah, I, I'm curious. I see a lot of, uh, especially last World Cup, all these Eden Hazard, like we have uh, Courtois in the back. No one's ever going to score. And then like we're going to go to the final. This is our, this is our golden generation. We're going to win it all this year. Every tournament that they go into, they've been saying that ever since uh, De Bruyne and all these kids are – kids all these guys started playing together they haven't they have no result to to show for it. you know true i think the reason i didn't think belgium is because there's like ten thousand belgians in the world so i just don't see them ever or hear them talk 
I feel Overhyped it's not team? a lot of very good oh. shout. Un- underperforming. I think they're accurately hyped, but they just don't perform to their potential. I mean, if you but constantly I, underperform, then aren't you by definition overrated? Look, yeah. my bias is speaking here. Just let me have this one. I can mind let you have shit. After yeah. all those deprecating like Mexico right. comments, I ain't letting you have shit. Yeah, you goddamn right. That's up, really <laughs> interesting, though. Belgium. I thought you were going to say the Dutch before you said the, the Belgians. I like It's interesting. Is the fucking Dutch your they five? Are on my God list. damn, I knew <laughs> it. <laughs> this man hates the Dutch. Anything orange, he can't stand, including your hair. No, I like the Dutch. Then why aren't it's you just, on my side about Alexi Lalas? It's the same fucking curse with the Dutch. It's like... Yeah. You say you have a golden generation, you lose a final in 2010. Uh, they lost multiple World Cup finals in their history. Lost a semifinal I mean, like, in 2014, it's too. It's sad. And then you talk to randos that aren't even Dutch, one of our friends, and he's like, oh, yeah, they're going to win it all. It's like, what are you smoking? Somebody? I think there's something. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? You know? Like. I was not ready for that. <laughs> he's still riding that, uh, that Robin High. I think there's something sexy about rooting for the Netherlands or, or Belgium. I think oh, Americans sure. I, we I like mean, the like, underdog and we're like, yeah, that, yeah, did hey, didn't that country get their ass kicked in World War II? Yeah, yeah, let's go for Belgium. Yeah, like they, yeah, oh, the Netherlands. Yeah, like, that's why yeah, so the, many Americans are Spurs the Dutch. Fans. They don't really do anything, right? Like Shell Oil, right? That's in that's in the Netherlands. Yeah, let's go for the Netherlands. We don't want the Germans to win. We don't want the French to win. Like no, no, let's go for one of these small guys. <laughs> I definitely think the smaller countries are overhyped. And they're like almost romanticized in American football culture. Yeah, yeah. I mean, rightfully so. It's fun. You don't want to. Oh, it's awesome. Anybody who knows, you know, who cares about the sport, you don't. Who cares about sport in general? The idea of sport doesn't yeah. want to just pick a bandwagon. Yeah. Pick. That's why I'm a Man City fan. That's why when France played Croatia in the World Cup and final, leave it that, that. damn near every neutral was probably hoping. I kind of think. I hope the Croatians pull this out. Because it's just cool to be like, wow, this country has three million people, and they won the World Not Cup. True fans. And they beat France. Of course, the French vehemently disagree, but yeah. And the <laughs> the one league uh, fan watching this. We probably don't even have any fans, <laughs> to be honest. Um, are there league uh, fans? I don't know, but um, interesting. Do you have a five? You said you're five? I have one more. I mean, I guess Argentina would, would trickle down to five because... Again, that's that's personal bias. Personal bias is running rampant in these uh, diluted fan bases. But how do you quantify that? Yeah. You know, I'm just going off my gut instinct and what I feel. Yeah, and I feel like Argentina is pretty dil- diluted in in that regard. But maybe I'm just playing it safe, trying to tamper my hopes before the the World Cup. But yeah, we we talk that we talk the talk and we walk the walk a lot of the time. But I mean, for the majority of my formative years. We just had a bunch of incredible players that everybody had really high expectations for and everybody loved and they just couldn't deliver. And that was me. The, I was a deluded fan. You know, I was like, this is it. Oh, my God. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. And we're crashing out. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. We're crashing out. Like, even in my head, I'll yeah. subconsciously, I will say in 2018 that Argentina ducked out in the semifinals, not the quarterfinals when they actually left. In my head, right here, I'm like, oh, yeah, we made it to the semis. No, we fucking didn't. We crashed out on a pathetic, a pathetic performance against France, which we somehow squeezed three goals out of. I wouldn't say that was pathetic. It was, it was a dogfight, but it should have been. We had the talent. We have had the talent to play a lot more competitive games. I think most would say that was the game of the tournament. I mean, look, a lot of that was luck. And, yeah, it was, it was exciting to watch, but there were too many mistakes. Yeah, y'all did not play no. well. You, you cut the mistakes out of that, we win that game. Yeah, You cut the mistakes out of that, we win that game. To, from an outsider's perspective, I see the Argentina fan base as almost aware that they've fallen short so many times. Yeah. So I don't see that arrogance that I see with Mexico, for example. Mm-hmm. Because Mexicans fully expect to win the Gold Cup and to win the CONCACAF Nations League or whatever other tournament is going on. And not only that, I mean, they fully expect to win the, uh, the World Cup group um, be- because of uh, historically what's happened to them. And I think Argentine fans, again, uh, not being Argentine, see that like, damn, we've come so close so far. It's almost like they support their team. They're very passionate, but they're also like 
scarred almost like hurt Humble. by like previous performances how dare you speak for the argentine fan base you have no idea where we've come i'm from. actually a, a specialist in speaking for ethnic groups that i'm not actually a part of <laughs> and delivering public statements on well, their we behalf have so many videos on it <laughs> i mean just watch the afcon preview um yeah which speaking of afcon my number five is nigeria and jake we talked about this last time oh that's a good one you know what i'm putting that that's in my list bro now. they I'll gas themselves up dog. i'll take that I'll and take after nigeria. that win against egypt and let's be frank i mean egypt came out with a 5-5-0 okay so that honestly just dilutes any result that nigeria got in that game and uh they're not looking good i mean Iannaccio, great goal Ugh. great goal must say i love that guy cracker in the top it's my guy. um and I, I love Nigeria. I'm just giving y'all shit because y'all think y'all are really, really good. Mm. And and you got some talent, but you probably not win an Afghan. I'm really, I'm really pulling for him for a while. Just for the record, man, I'm really. I, do I'd be, I'd be ecstatic, but yeah, I just I, I really don't like when when the going gets tough late in the group stage. I just don't know if they'll have what it takes with no. missing, especially missing the two guys that they're missing, Emmanuel yeah. Dennis and uh, Victor Olsenhan. I just don't think they'll have enough. Those are my five. All right, so Jake, let's just let's just go around and like just recap our top five, really quick, so I can make this a clip. Me start. Yeah. China, Belgium, uh, the Dutch, <laughs> Argentina, Mexico. Okay. Yeah, I got Dallas Cowboys and Dallas Cowboys, of course. I got I, England, one. Mexico, Egypt, Nigeria, and who's the fifth thing? Argentina. Argentina. You said Argentina five. Argentina. So then I think I got uh, what I piggybacked off of you guys. So um, at the very top, I've got. Um, oh God, who did I? Who did I say? Who was my number one? England. England, thank you. So it was uh, England, the United States, um, then Argentina, or no, then Nigeria, then Argentina, and then uh, Mexico, I guess. Damn, so. So Argentina, interesting. I feel like I probably have a better answer than Argentina, only because of like that like kind of humility that I, that I spoke about. But I can't think of anybody else on the spot. Yeah. Um, Interesting, Belgium and Netherlands. Well, it's just our personal what experiences, a shout. you know. Yeah, no, Jake definitely what has the most original, original list here. What do you guys just, you know, curiosity for the clip? What, uh, what's the most wholesome fan base? That you've Any ever seen? Asian fan base that's not China. <laughs> okay, yeah. Japan friendliest fans we've encountered so far. I think it's fair to say. Koreans close second. Mine was Iceland. You remember okay. when they had that run in the Euros? That was fun. That was fun. I love seeing those guys screaming and jumping around in the, the beautiful jerseys. That was That's like, a good shot. Yeah. my guys. You know, Canadians are pretty nice, too. Ah, uh, They're becoming pretty delusional on the Alfonso Davies train. You're right. You're right. They're, they're, their delusion levels are going Their up. era of peace fucking, is coming to an end. Yeah. We're going to invade. Uh, yeah. They, yeah. they want to invade. cannot win you the World Cup. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, that that's like that's good. I retract my statement. They definitely since beating Mexico, I mean it's 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 getting toxic over there up north. <laughs> they gotta dial it back. All right, Mexico ain't even that good right now. Let's just relax. Stay tuned for the next gold cup. It's gonna be a shit show. Oh, it's gonna be a shit show, bro. <laughs> Riots in the streets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying oh, to think of the nicest South American fan base. There's no, no one. Costa Ricans are really nice. That's Central American, obviously, I, but that's the only one I can think of. The only Costa Rican fan I know yelled at me in Spanish. She was a beautiful Costa Rican woman. She yelled at me in Spanish fervently um, about the Costa Rican national team. So I will hold my tongue. Mm, you probably just didn't pay the bill, and then she was mad. We were not on a date <laughs> oh, <laughs> at all. In any capacity, no, no. Well, uh, well, never mind. I don't know. I guess you just have a face that's easy to yell at in Spanish. Of course. That's what my teachers tell me. Mm. I think Jake would agree with that. Jake doesn't yell. That's true. Jake doesn't yell. Although I have seen him yell, yell at sporting events. Not yell out of anger. <laughs> yeah, you don't yell out of anger. That's true. Let's quickly talk about um, the transfers. And then I say we I say we wrap it up after that because we're okay, already approaching yeah. an hour. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yep. I mean, 
Jake, is there anything, is there any transfer specifically right now that, sh- that either caught your eye or y- you want to mention something about? Um, I actually, I know we're all going to, we're all going to talk about, uh, Aston Villa. Yeah, of course. You know, continue. Um, I will say just one little tidbit on that. Good for Stevie G. Good for Stevie yeah. G. That well was done, a great Steve. signing for them. Excellent well work, Steve. Um, one that, uh, kind of, I, that I think could be interesting with, uh, with Patrick Bamford out still is, uh, Leeds signed a center forward. His name is Mateo Joseph Fernandez. He's a British-born Spaniard kid. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's and he's coming from fu- uh, La Liga. <laughs> oh shit! Okay, against the Spanish team. I don't remember what team he uh, he's made a few appearances for them. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I I feel Leeds plays an interesting type of football and. Uh, you know their center forwards are have are uh, a key part of that. Yeah, and they've uh, been struggling to score. I, I don't know. I always like seeing wonder kids out there and like them raising their value and you know having something to prove. That's that's cool. Interesting. I didn't even know about that transfer. Um, yeah, I mean that's good. Leeds definitely need a, a guy up top with with uh, with Bamford out. So hopefully this guy, the Spanish English guy hands out yeah i don't know who what what national team he plays for which would be interesting maybe he's undecided he play for england yeah, how, how old is he 19 18 okay. yeah he, he probably is youth probably plays yeah, for youth probably, something u22s or something i i would yeah. imagine he's probably shopping around hopefully he'll commit to spain spain needs some more uh talent up top that would be fun they do need a, a true striker. they need a true striker yeah, yeah. They're, they're i mean stacked on the wing i don't think ferran torres is going to Transform into a true striker. Although no, they'd have to play. All some, city fans wanted him to be the answer. Some new system, yeah. But either him or Morata right now will start in the middle. Yeah. Um, but anyways, that's that's cool to see. I mean, I, also I hope that this pressure doesn't kill this kid. That's a lot to be yeah. like. All right, Patrick Bamford was really good last year. We need you to step in and uh, do the exact same thing he did. No, they. You know what? They should handle it. Uh, just like oh my god, what's what's his name? He's the 17, 18 year old kid, Cole Cole Palmer. For Man City, should handle it like that. Ain't nobody know that boy. Let me just go to that boy trash. Ain't nobody known that boy. Okay, well he seems to be finding a pretty good run of form, um, but uh, I think they should handle it the <laughs> same way. You know, um, just throw him in, at, you know, for some some nobody games, and and that's an investment for a couple of years from now. Yeah. No, he needs to no go pressure. on loan if he wants to grow his career. Cole or uh, Cole. Well, that's what all these players need to do. Right? I don't that, understand. That's, that's what they say, but I mean, if you're not playing, you have to. You have to play. There is no way he's going to beat Foden. No, no. no okay, yeah. No, no, no. Nobody's just going to fucking Foden break into Foden's position. Day. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'll stop talking about City. It's okay. Yeah, ain't nobody, ain't nobody want to hear that. Nobody cares about City. Speaking about playing time, though, very uninteresting team. Thank you guys for segueing into uh, playing time because I think that's something important to discuss when we're talking about our American boys who just went overseas. Daryl Dyke, aka Daryl DK, just going to West Brom. How much you said the fee was? Seven mil. Seven million plus expenses or something. Okay. In ex- in excess of seven okay. million. We'll plus say seven eight to eight mil. You know, so that's a sizable fee for an MLS player going abroad. And then we got Ricardo Pepe 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 going to Augsburg in Germany for their record signing, twenty million dollars or euros. I'm not sure which one it was. Mm-hmm. Um, is it Augsburg record signing or is it the MLS record signing? It said it was, uh, from what I read, Augsburg's record signing. A club record signing is what I read. So I wonder if it's MLS's record sale of a player as well. I don't know. I don't know. I saw something, because I, I asked you, because I thought I saw something about like, for a homegrown player, it's the largest fee ever. I could see that. But yeah, maybe, so maybe how, it's how much did, Ibrahim, did Ibrahimovic leave LA on a free transfer? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm wondering, there's probably if, like one of those players that left over there and then came back to Europe or uh, or something like that, South America maybe. Yeah, I'm talking think, about a sale, like an MLS yeah. club selling to a Europe. I can't club. think of anybody that would apply to, like maybe Christian Pavon when he left, but he definitely didn't go yeah, for more than 20 mil. Uh, he, if my boy Freddie Adu would have made it, he would have been 80 million from the MLS million. over to Man U. Shoot. But uh, that boy. Yeah. Tragedy. 
Still would have been a uh, better signing than Nicola Pepe for Arsenal. That man is trash. Um, I hope... I think this is exciting, but also a bit weird now because I don't know how the U.S. is going to... Is gonna deal with this. Miguel, me, sorry, Miguel Almiron went for twenty six million. Oh, to Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, he's a uh, Paraguayan. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, he's he's decent. Okay, so shout out to Almiron and to Paraguay and to Paraguay. They're gonna need it. They're gonna need that help in the next round of qualifying. Woo. But anyways, do you guys think this is? A, do you think there's any negatives to these two promising American strikers going overseas to their respective clubs? It's scary. I'm scared. Elaborate. It's it's just nerve wracking. Yeah, a, a new kid goes over to Europe. Is he going to represent us well? Like, what what's that going to be? Where am I going to see him on FIFA? Is he going to be in the reserve bench automatically for the U.S.? Like, I I don't know. That's just a lot of anxiety that it gives me. Like, yeah, best of luck. You're going for a, a, you know Augsburg's record signing. That's a huge deal. Are we going to fold or are we going to? I don't know. Am I am I going to see you fighting for something over there? You know, I'm I'm really uh, nervous about that. I'm not I'm not sad that it happened or anything. I'm excited, but that comes with a lot of nerves. Yeah, I'm sure the same nerves that this kid is experiencing, probably tenfold over, maybe more. You know, I just really hope that pressure doesn't get to him because that means big things for the U.S. men's national team if he doesn't, and for Augsburg, you know, and for the MLS, and for the MLS. This is this is pretty freaking huge. There's news. a lot riding on this. There's a lot riding on this, and not not that it's just going to be some like random switch and people are going to be going for 24 mil a pop, you know, from now on. Like I don't think that's realistic. But uh, if that man goes over there and does well and maybe gets signed by an even bigger club, or even if he if yeah. they love him at Augsburg mm-hmm. and he stays as like a career player for Augsburg exceptional yeah that's awesome that's american making that's an american making history in europe and that is a big deal for us so yeah it makes Mm -hmm. me nervous that we're representing on the big stage like that you know who also made a big impact in the german league i'm pretty sure is alexi lalas what do you think about that i remember he played in the italian league and um, not much to write home about there i didn't even know he played there I'm almost certain he played in the German League. I mean, I would would not be surprised if he was shopped around to a few teams. Look, I have no qualms against this man as a player. No, you fucking hate him. And now I'm just going to keep bringing him up every time. Just as an analyst. I love love talking about him. He actually never played in Europe. I totally thought he did. You're beaming with excitement. He played in Italy. No, he never played for any... He never played for any uh, European club. I am. He only played 169 sure. club games. Dude, that like, that seems completely incorrect. I'm 90 percent sure he played in Italy. Did he like tear multiple like ACLs or something? That's a that's not even 200 career games. That's nothing. Shit, bro, my club team plays. They were like thirty-two your, games a year. They were like your afro and goatee is a hygiene concern. Oh here my in gosh, Europe. you need to shave that. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. Okay. Well, I stand corrected. You do. So, what's the actual truth? What's the, What's the verdict here? I'm I'm trying to pull up transfer market. It's not working. So he did play overseas. He did not. That was that was me reading off Wikipedia. Oh, okay. I'm just going to double God, Who knew this was going to derail? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Lexi hold Lawless. Hold on, hold on. Our viewers knew this was going to derail. That's what they're here for. We come up with this nice spreadsheet about all the things we're going to talk about. Fucking nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He did play in Syria A for Padova. Why do you keep saying Syria A? Syria A. Stop gentrifying. Syria. <laughs> Stop gen- <laughs> Syria A. You said that the last podcast, too, and I listened back when I was editing. I was like... This is dumb motherfucker. It's Syria. This is a. why we are ignorant <laughs> like, Americans. What we the don't need fuck? to fuck. I'm ashamed shit. I didn't say anything. Did you hear my dumb ass? Stop gentrifying Syria A like Italians aren't white. <laughs> Syria A. Damn. Oh, God. I knew it. God. Vindication. That's what I love. Right. I was right okay. about every okay. one of my he takes because in... Jake was wrong for that one instance. So that yeah. means I was right throughout the rest of the episode. And everybody okay. knows that. Our viewers know that. Okay. You're right. Would you guys rather be um, Daryl DK or Ricardo Pepe in this situation? Oh, that's a hell of a question. 
Well, we only I'm got Ricardo. like four minutes left in the episode, so we got to make this quick. I'm Ricardo. You think so? I'm Ricardo. You'd rather go to Bundesliga than the championship? I think the Bundesliga has been more favorable to American players than the Prem. Damn, that's a good point. Damn, that's a good point. Um, Damn, that's a good point. That's the greatest point I've ever heard. Wow, I fucking hate it here. I'm I'm blown away right now. I'm done with you, motherfuckers. I'm, I, I'm with you. And maybe, I, I mean, over the past decade, there's Doors been locked. a German German to American pipeline for some of our young starlets to uh, play over there, or at least try to play over there. Um, I don't know if because German clubs are. Not to over overuse the word delusional, and they think that uh, American players are better than they are, and they just try them out for a season or two and then send them back. Or I, I don't know, maybe they can get our players on the cheap. You know, cheaper than scouting some Definitely. random village in the Ukraine. Definitely, and I think enough Americans have panned out to where they're like, okay, this is worth the risk. Yeah, twenty mil though. That was, when I saw that, I was like, I think the price tag no scares me. No way. I think the price tag scares me. I would rather go under the radar to the Prem okay. and have time to go around there, maybe play, go, go on loan tough, to the championship man, or something. Bro. Prem's tough. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying, but I don't like the price tag. I think, me personally, it's expectation. my expectation would eat me up inside, which is why I'm nervous for these guys going, you know? Yeah. And West Brom are most likely going to be promoted. So, you know, Daryl DK will get a... I, I don't know if he's transferring now or if it's at the end of the season, but... I mean, he's going to be most likely in the Prem going up against, you know, like the Liverpool back line yeah. next year. I mean, that that could also be... Now, he is older than Pepe, Pepe, so it's not quite as intense for, like, you know, a guy who's 19 or 20, however old he is, to to go up against these all-stars, but still. And, you know, Daryl DK is a big dude, too, so he's pretty physical already. Pepe yeah. looks like a college kid. I mean, because he is. Mm-hmm. So. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I hope it pans out well. You know, we can never have enough options up top. And we're talking about potentially like Pulisic, one of these guys, Gio Reyna. I mean, there's, you know, McKenzie feeding them the through balls. That could be a really exciting American attack should this yeah. pan out. It's already yeah. exciting even if it doesn't pan out. We're already looking pretty promising. But if, if one of these guys pops off, excellent, you know? We haven't really had a good target man like that, you know. Out the door was kind of supposed to be that, and we know how that went. But hopefully, you know, Daryl DK can can come in and, and give us that other dimension to our attacking game. Because we'll get him the service. The U.S. will put in the service. Yeah. With Reyna and Pulisic, they'll get him the ball. Yeah. We just need somebody who can put it mm-hmm. away. And, you know, we haven't had that. We, we, we can't have, like, Wondolowski, you know, up top. That ain't, that ain't doing it for us. We, so we need somebody like like these guys. Yeah, that's that's really well said. We should really pay attention next time U.S. has a game and these guys play because I don't know that much. I've seen Daryl DK play probably three times for us. I don't know that much about did, this Ricardo Pepe kid. Did did they play in Olympic qualifying? I think they played against Bosnia in the friendly. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I'm trying to I remember. I watched all the Olympic qualifying, which that was a disaster. Yeah, that but, was a disaster. I mean... <laughs> God, just when you think things are looking good, it's like mm-hmm. Honduras beats your ass, or <laughs> like whoever it is. I don't even remember. There's probably some guy that saw he did play, and he's like, um, "No, twenty million, not worth it." Yeah. No, I give my shoelace yeah. for him. <laughs> no, no, no. In all seriousness, best luck to the boys overseas. Yeah, best luck to the boys. Yeah. Anything else you Love guys want to say before we we sign off over the hour mark here? Nothing. Alexi Lalas, if you're listening, please come on the show. You are invited. We're extending an invitation officially. I think I'm I think I'm busy that day. Okay. Jake will interview him. All right. That's Daniel. Yeah. So, Alexi, how was the German League? <laughs> First question. I heard you started your career. Yeah. So your time at uh, Borussia Dortmund. I'm going to start How a riot that? outside. Me and just like 50 local Argentines are going to be storming. Just a freaking brick's going to come <laughs> into the window. In true Argentine fashion. Gosh. Yeah, so uh, if you want to see that episode, make sure you subscribe to the Yankee Football 
on YouTube. Follow us over on Twitter at Yank Football Pod. We were, spoiler alert, going to do another segment on this show. So instead, we're just going to save that for the next episode. And that's going to be our Premier League team of the season so far, you know, our starting 11. So if that sounds like something y'all would like, hit that notification bell so you don't miss that episode. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Music, make sure you give the podcast a thumbs up or a five-star rating. Share it with your friends. Share it with your mom. We'll see you guys in the next episode.